In today's video, we're talking about grip. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about grip equipment and specifically my most commonly used grip for photography. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say grip, grip refers to all the supporting equipment that is normally inside of a studio. So things such as a light stand, um, an apple box, clamps, that sort of thing is referred to as grip. Now, the things that I'm gonna show you today are not the only grip that I own. I own a whole bunch of stuff, but these are the ones that I use consistently from job to job. Now, as you probably already know, anything related to photography is normally really expensive. So I'm gonna let you know where you can save some cash by getting cheaper options of these items where applicable so that you don't miss out on functionality and also get something that is decent quality. And just before we get started, just a reminder to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it. So the first item is an A clamp, uh, named so because it looks like an A. And uh, these things don't really have a specific use, it's just a general purpose tool. Uh, the way that I use them mostly is to hang up backgrounds. So I might set up a couple of light stands with a cross beam, and then you just clamp whatever background you're using this to a beam. Um, this, I've got a couple of different sizes. That's the smaller one as well. They're just, they're just really handy to have around. Again, uh, sometimes you just need something held onto something else, and this does it very, very quickly. Uh, the other way that I use them also is in product photography. I use a whole bunch of these, especially the little ones, for things such as bounce cards. So if I've got to put uh, bounce cards around a product on a tabletop, this is just the easiest way to just put that in place really, really quickly. You don't have to rig up anything else and you can just remove it and move it around so it's not stuck. So A clamps are uh, really, really useful. So if you agree, make sure you give the video a like right now. Okay, item number two it is the super clamp. Uh, these things, I never really understood these um, until I got my first one, and now I own heaps of these. These are just incredibly useful. Uh, what it is, is just a, it's, a, it's another type of clamp, but this, uh, this can tighten really, really tight and very securely onto something. So essentially this is the jaw here, which can uh, open or it can close. So basically it does that sort of thing, that sort of movement. Um, and what it does is it, uh, it allows you to clamp onto something really, really tightly so that then you can use these holes on the bottom to mount things onto it. So typically, you're, you're most likely to mount something like a light onto, onto something like this. Now, light can be uh, heavy and expensive, so you want to make sure that it's securely uh, fastened onto whatever it is. And these things, um, I've actually... I've actually like put my whole body weight on one of these when it's properly attached to something and it just won't give. So this is one of the items where you probably don't want to skimp too much. I think this is a Manfrotto one and there's not a lot that can go wrong with it, but it is all metal and it's very, very solid and, and very well built. So like I said, at the bottom of the, uh, of the super clamp, you've got all these different holes, including this one here, which is used for... Um, how I use that is, let me show you this. So this is uh, another, uh, this is not part of the items I was gonna show you, but this is, I think we call a flexi arm. It's by Manfrotto. And what it does is, uh, it's just a flexible arm that you can just put things like lights, for example, at the end. But I use this in conjunction with this because what you can do is you can insert that in there and then you can just tighten that up. And that's not gonna go anywhere now. Uh, so you can then clamp this onto a table, for example, and uh, you can just move this about and, you know, use it, put it in any position that you want. That's not going to go anywhere. That's very, very secure. So as well as the, um, the larger holes there, you've got some smaller holes in there, which are the same as the ones that you find on the bottom of your camera. So if you wanted to mount your camera onto, uh, let's say you're doing a time lapse, somewhere and when you want to leave the camera somewhere where it doesn't um it doesn't it's not going to move then you can attach this clamp to say a pole you can put a ball head at the end of this here and then you can mount the camera and again that's going to be very very secure uh securely fastened the 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 clamps themselves also come with these little adapters that come off so you can see that there they'll come off and then you can now put this onto, or you can attach this to something that say like a round tube or a square pipe, and it's gonna get a much 
uh, a much better bite. So this will uh, tighten. It, it basically does that, right? So it just that's not going to go anywhere because that's now sealed in there. So yeah, look, really, really uh, useful. They make a couple of different uh, sizes of these, but I've only got the big ones because, like I said, I normally mount things such as lights or just a, a um, mostly heavy equipment. So I just want the big chunky ones. So that is the super clamp. So the next item is a magic arm. And these things are super useful for things such as product photography. That's where I use mine the most. This is the little one, but you can also get bigger ones of these. Um, and what they do is you have these, um, it's basically this, it's sort of like an arm. It's like it's with different joints. So you've got a little ball joint at the end here. You've got a, a joint in the middle there and you've got another ball joint at the end. And what you do is you've got a knob here that you can tighten. And when you tighten this, it tightens the whole arm, all the joints everywhere. So you just get this thing into shape in whatever shape you want to. Let's say that I want to have it in that sort of shape and hold it there for a second. Then what I do is I tighten this here. And now that arm is not going to move anything. Like that ball joint there is tight. So is the one at the end and so is the one in the middle. So I use this normally in... Uh, conjunction with the uh, super clamp that we've already looked at on the bottom like I said before the super clamp has all these little holes in there the, they're uh, the standard thread like the one on the bottom of your camera so I would uh, screw this uh, onto the bottom of the super, uh, the super clamp and I wasn't going to show you this but let's uh, let's go ahead and do this so you could clamp this to the bottom of the table and now you've got this little, if you like, arm that you could put, say, a speed light onto here if you're doing, say, product photography. And if you just need to move the, the rig just a little bit, then you just loosen this up and then you can just move it around and just tighten it up again. And once it's tight, then that doesn't move anyway, right? So that is the magic arm. Again, super useful for things such as product photography. Um, and um, yeah, so I think you can get these, you can get some inexpensive ones uh, of these for the smaller ones. I wouldn't go totally cheap, but just go uh, somewhere around the middle. And I'll have links to this, this stuff down the bottom as well if you want to check it out. Um, but if you're going to use, uh, if you're going to get the bigger ones, then I would recommend going with something like Manfrotto because um, you're probably going to mount some really expensive gear onto that. So you want to make sure that it's going to hold. Okay, so the next item is a grip head. And these are normally mounted onto light stands. Uh, so if you've ever seen a light stand, you'll know that there's a mounting hole on the top of the light stand so that these can just lock in there as well and you can just tighten them up and secure uh, that onto the light stand. And then what it supplies you with is these holes here that you can see, uh, they're different size ones. And essentially this becomes a clamp that allows you to uh, clamp on to round objects. Primarily, it's probably going to be something like a, uh, a boom. So that's what I mostly use these for. Sometimes I will do some product photography where I've got, say, something on the table here and I need to bring a light directly above the product. So I could try and use the uh, magic arm that we had a look before, but it is quite small. So it doesn't really give me uh, the ability to bring a light, uh, say, right above somewhere up here because it's just not big enough. So in that case, what I would do is I would set up a light stand, say, over here, and then I would put the grip head onto the light stand. And then I've got these holes in here where I can actually insert something like a boom. Uh, I would uh, pick the, let me just pick one of the holes in here just to give you an indication of how this works. So let's say that I've got that mounted onto the light stand. I've got this boom now where I can actually mount my light at the end of this, right? Now uh, you would pick a different hole obviously because that's loose there, but you pick one of the smaller ones and then you just tighten it up with this. But then that gives you a really secure way of putting uh, a light directly above. It doesn't have to be a light, it can be something else, uh, but primarily how I use it is with a light. So you can have the light right above there and it allows you to extend and you can go even further as well because these, uh, these uh, poles will extend. So as long as you've got your light stand secure with sandbags, it's not going to tip over. Uh, but it's a really easy way to be able to just get, extend the reach of your light stand. Okay, so the last item I'm going to talk about is gaffer tape. And uh, I'm not sure what I can teach you about gaffer tape that you haven't heard before. But I will say this, if you were to buy just one thing out of everything that I've shown you here today, it would definitely be this. Because in some cases, this can do some of the jobs that some of those things can do also. So I think it's absolutely critical to have a roll of gaffer tape on set. 
So why do we want gaffer tape anyway? Why can't we use duct tape? The reason is that when uh, when you use good quality gaffer tape, it doesn't leave any residue behind. So if you're doing things such as product photography and you, and you need to stick things to the product, uh, when you peel it off, you run the risk of leaving uh, residue, some of that sticky stuff, if you use some of the cheaper tapes. And with the better quality tapes, it's just, it's just going to come off. None of that stuff is going to be left on your product. Now, what a lot of people do, and I've done this, is you start off using cheaper tape because you think that tape is tape, and these can be quite expensive. Um, and I'm here to try and save you some money and some headaches because we all end up here with really good quality gaff tape. This one here is made by Roscoe. It's the one that I like the most. Um, and I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in, in uh, getting a roll of these. And I have different types of rolls. I've got different sizes, different colors. The black one, it's, an, it's a nice mat, so it's not uh, reflective. So it's perfect for doing things such as product photography. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't stand out at all. But I've also got a fluoro green one that I use for covering up cables. If I've got cables and, and I've got people walking around, I will tape the, the power cables onto the floor and because it's fluoro green then it's no longer a uh, trip hazard so everyone can see it then i've also got these little skinny ones as well these are really good for making labels so i'll just rip a piece of this off and just write on it with a marker uh, and then again i can just pull it off and and there's no residue left on the surface uh, the other reason i use these ones as well is as a marker so if i'm shooting people and i do a lot of headshots um, I normally will put a T marker on the floor, which indicates to the uh, to the talent where they need to stand, where they need to put their feet. So that's a really good uh, a really good use for these as well. Um, so yeah, so that is gaff tape. Now there is a um, a myth about gaffer tape um, where you can. Uh, you can use it onto walls and then when you peel it off, it doesn't peel the paint. I'm here to tell you that that's actually not true. You can definitely peel paint off a wall using gaffer tape. If you need something to stick onto a wall, make sure that you use painter's tape. I use that as well. Um, but if I had to pick one roll of tape and uh, I couldn't use anything else for the rest of my life, it would definitely be gaffer tape. So this is the case that I used to keep all of my grip. Uh, it's just a tool case that I bought at a hardware store and it works really well because essentially what these things are, they are tools. The tools to help you solve problems while you're on set. So this case works really well because it's got a handle, it's sort of like a suitcase and it allows me to take it with me. And as I buy new things, new bits of grip, they just get thrown into this case. In fact, I'm probably going to have to get a second case because I've, I've grown my, my collection. So I'll probably go with exactly the same uh, case, just another one of these, because this solution works so well. Now, like I said before, there's a lot of other stuff in here as well. So if you are interested in me going through this case, let me know in the description below. Leave me a comment in there and I'll make a video about everything else that's in here. Now, if you enjoyed watching this video, it'd be great if you could give it a like. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe to the channel because you know how to subscribe to a channel and you'll do that if you want to. But if you could give the video a like, it really makes a difference to me. And don't forget to check out ministryofphoto.com where you'll find links to all of my videos as well as blog articles and free resources that you can download. So make sure you check it out. And again, if you're interested in everything else that's inside of this box, leave me a comment below telling me so, and I'll make a separate video about every item that I've got in this case. So that's all from me. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.